My work is about the various properties of light and the way it interacts with surfaces. I use glass because it's an available material. It's not terribly expensive, but it also has three interesting characteristics in that it reflects, absorbs, and transmits light at the same time. Surface techniques that I use uh, include um, the deposition of very thin layers of various materials onto either one side of the glass panel or both sides. It's done in a process called thermal evaporation in a vacuum. It deposits an exquisitely thin and controllable film of materials that adhere well to the glass and change the nature of the way the light is either reflected, transmitted, or absorbed. The first constructions I did that incorporated glass were just when I got out of art school in 1959. And then I went into uh, working, incorporating mirrors and, and uh, glass surfaces into both the paintings and some small constructions, and it led to uh, the focus of glass exclusively for what I was trying to do. I found it very interesting. As somebody told me about a uh, process of, that was used in the film business for making efficient reflectors and, and lenses. I went to the Los Angeles phone book and looked up the process and contacted somebody that did it and, and uh, I hired that company to do my original work. My first one-person show in New York, several of the pieces were damaged in shipping and well, the man I hired in New York to repair these sculptures suggested to me that it, you know, he charged me a lot of money to shut down one of his uh, special uh, evaporators to do my job. And he suggested that I get into it myself because I could do a lot more work for a lot less money if I had the equipment. And I was not mechanically inclined, actually, uh, but it did seem like a reasonable thought. And so that's what I ended up doing, buying the equipment and staying in New York for a couple of years. I worked with the, th that equipment and then decided I wanted to do some larger things. And I ended up having a, a company that would build a larger coding system for me. It was made in Ni near Niagara Falls, New York, and was shipped to Venice Beach. And uh, that piece of equipment r arrived at my studio in 1969, and, and it started uh, a whole different kind of concept for the use of it. In 1972, I moved to Taos, and then a couple of years later, I decided I wanted to stay, and I found the old building, which was a ruin, and a friend of mine and I bought it together, and we fixed it up for our own studios. When I decide on doing a, a series of cubes, uh, the first decision is, how big are they going to be, and what kind of glass am I going to work with? Anyways, we find, we find the material that is free from as many scratches as possible. Glass actually may look perfect, but has a lot of scratches. And so we have to find good material. And then it has to be cut to the size that I want and, uh, and beveled so that uh, the parts go together at exactly a 90 degree. You have to clean the surface of the glass well enough that the coatings will stick to it. So after a, a uh, ultrasonic cleaning of the surface of the glass, it goes into a vacuum chamber where the air is removed 
and uh, the chamber, in a sense, gets like a big light bulb where in that the light bulb has tungsten filaments in it that get bright. Well, the tank has those also, and on those filaments are the materials that will heat up till they evaporate. And there's no air in between the source of the evaporation and the surface to be coated. So the evaporated metals just adhere to the clean surface and uh, uh, have the same natural crystalline structure as a thin film that they did as a solid. So the optical qualities are the same. The last few years, uh, I've been concentrating on the use of uh, a nickel chrome alloy called Inconel as the material that raises the reflectivity of the surfaces. The silicon monoxide interferes with the light. For my purposes, it, it, it works exactly the same as a little bit of uh, gasoline does on a puddle of water. It interferes with the light that's reflected off of the water at wavelengths equivalent to the thickness of the coating. I have the ability to control the wavelengths that I want by their thickness. And uh, my criteria is pretty simple. I just don't, I want it to be something new that I've seen. I want it, I want to know, I want to feel that the that this piece is different from anything I've done before, even though the format is the same. If they're cared for, they're going to be around for a long time. If you drop them, they'll break. I don't know, there's kind of a fragility in everything. Uh, they, there's a patina that comes to everything with age, and I don't try and fight that patina. I, I like it. I like, I like to see the pieces have a lifetime, but uh, I don't want to interact with the, with the, the art world as a conservator. When my time is up, the stuff goes into, uh, into some other hands, and, and I, I, I don't know how to think about what, the, what my responsibility is to those things. Uh, I wouldn't mind hearing creative options from the bigger world about how to deal with those things, but I don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about that. Everything has its lifetime. And I'm, I'm not the timekeeper. I'm just the artist. You know.